Hi, everyone, and welcome to Wine.com Experiences. I'm Gwendolyn Osborne. Today, we are tasting and talking about one of my favorite regions in France, the Loire Valley. Uh, there are many, many reasons to love the Loire Valley outside of wine, with its, its stunning gardens and gorgeous chateau and castles. But in wine, this region is exciting, it's diverse, it's delicious, and if you're not already a Loire wine lover, I guarantee you will be after tasting these wines. So if you did purchase the trio of wines to taste along with us from wine.com, please go ahead, get those open, uh, pour them into some glassware. Um, if you don't have the trio, not a problem. It's still available on wine.com. And of course, this video lives on on the wine.com YouTube channel after today, which I recommend you subscribe to uh, so you can keep up with all of our tastings and visit the ones we have already done. The wines, these three wines that we are tasting today in order are the Graciane Meilleur Cremant de Loire, the Sancerre from Henri Bourgeois, and the Chinon from Domaine Paul Buis. So quick intro into the Loire before we get started. So here's the Loire Valley on the map in green to your west. So this is the Loire Valley. And unlike most French wine regions, um, it runs east to west because it's following the Loire uh, the Loire River, which ends at the Atlantic Ocean. So um, it really, that, that whole east to west thing along this river gives you such a variety of climates, you know, starting at the Atlantic Ocean, moving all the way um, in intercontinental, this continental climate. Um, and that adds up to a diverse climactic influences for multiple grape varieties. And then you have the soils, Ugh, the soils of the Loire. I mean, this is a place you really get excited about dirt. So, um, which our guests will definitely get more into, but um, of all these factors, this, this diversity, it means we have a region that produces such a wonderful range of wines from um, still to sparkling and then uh, bone dry to deliciously sweet. And the ones we're tasting will start here in the Samur and then um, we'll head over to Sancerre on the Centre Loire. And then we will come back over to the Touraine with a Chinon. So um, a wonderful, diverse selection um, to introduce you to the Loire Valley. So our guests, let us introduce them now. Um, from Gracienne et Meilleur, we have winemaker Florence Hayes. From Henri Bourgeois, we have managing director Arnaud Bourgeois. And from Domaine Paul Buis, we have owner Philippe Chenier. Bonsoir. Bienvenue. Bonsoir. Welcome. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today to talk about these wines. I'm so excited. Um, so, so I think, you know, before we get started, I wanted to talk a little bit, just get, get your, um, not take, but talk to us about the Loire, because I think so many people know the Loire Valley as a wine region, but don't know all of it. They don't really know how interesting and full and um, aware of everything it has to offer. So, Maybe if you could give me your take of what differentiates the Loire Valley as the wine region in France and, and to you. So um, uh, Florence, we'll start with you. Yes, yes, I will be happy to start. So yes, uh, the Loire region is a very wide uh, region uh, along the river, the Loire River. And uh, in the Loire Valley, we have so many soils, climates, as you mentioned it, from ocean up to continental. And uh, thanks to, to the, the complementarity of the climate and the soil, we can grow different varieties, grape varieties. And in the Loire region, we have uh, many varieties to produce specific red wines, uh, pink or rosy wines, sparkling wines. And uh, so there are many differences uh, between the grape varieties, the soils and the climate. And we have a very large uh, range of wines, that's right. Yeah, and that's what makes me always love the Loire. There's something for everyone. And Arnaud, tell us about Yes, uh, I totally agree uh, with Florence. Uh, the diversity is just magical and unique. Uh, the Loire uh, region offers so many different styles of wines. Uh, and it's a blessing. A place like Sancerre, for example, is just a unique place because of the nature of the soils, because of... Uh, uh, the, the climate, microclimate that we are having, what the prehistoric time uh, brought over here with a specific event. Definitely in Loire Valley, we have so many um, 
unique reason to discover and which make uh, the Loire wine very different to our uh, uh, other colleagues' region wine. Thank you. And uh, Philippe? I think Arnaud and Florence said it all. Uh, we, we are very, very lucky to, to be in such a blessed place. And uh, that is also rich with a story where you can have the home uh, of Leonardo da Vinci, where you can have uh, homes of kings uh, from, uh, from the Nantes region to the Sancerre. I mean, the Loire Valley is definitely one of the most beautiful places in France. Yes, it's where the kings went to summer, right? They had their other chateau there. So um, lots of lots of fun history to visit. So a perfect trip to the Loire. So, um, well, let's start tasting. We are going to start with uh, Gréciane et Mir, Tremont, de Loire. So uh, Florence, tell us a little bit about uh, the beginnings of Gréciane et Mir and, and uh, its focus on sparkling wines. Yes. So Gracian Meyer was founded uh, more than 150 years ago by two founders. One uh, came from uh, Champagne, Alfred Gracia, and the second one uh, came from uh, Alsace. Uh, his name was Albert Meyer. And together they founded Gracian Meyer in Saumur, in the Loire Valley, to produce sparkling wines. And at the same time, they are founded, they founded the house of Alfred uh, Gracien in Champagne. So we are still now two um, houses, sparkling wines, houses, uh, making uh, sparkling wines with the second fermentation in bottles. So this is very important to know that we, we don't uh, put uh, carbon dioxide in the wine, but uh, we produce the sparkling wines, so with um, second fermentation in the bottles. Um, there is another link between uh, our two houses in Champagne and in the Loire Valley. It's also the soil. Uh, we have uh, the same soil, it's a chalky soil that uh, there is in Champagne and that we have also here in Saumur. Mm -hmm. So these two links uh, between Champagne and the Loire Valley to produce sparkling wines. And uh, Samur also makes wonderful sparkling wine. One is the soil. What else about Samur makes it so perfect um, for the sparkling wine? So in Samur, there is a combination uh, between so the soils, the chalky soils, uh, with the climate. We are here between the oceanic and the continental climates. So it's semi semi uh, oceanic climate, and we have we have also the freshness of the Loire River. And uh, thanks to all these elements, we can uh, grow uh, the great varieties. Uh, we are specific for the sparkling wines. Uh, this is the Chenin. Uh, the Chenin is a very, a very famous and a very well-known uh, great variety from the Loire Valley. And we use also the Chardonnay, the Chardonnay that we can find also in Champagne. And uh, because of the same soils, of Chokil soils, we, we use uh, Chardonnay from the chalky soils and the Chenin from the plain, uh, so to produce our sparkling wines. Okay, and so for this particular Cremant that we have today, what is the blend of the cépage for the grape varieties? So in this blend, uh, in the Cremant de Loire, so that we have here to taste, uh, there is a blend uh, of Chardonnay, for 45% uh, of Chenin for 45%. And uh, we have uh, added 10% of Pinot Noir. So the reason are for the Chardonnay, we can have a very fresh uh, fruits, uh, aromas, and uh, the complexity uh, that is given by the Chardonnay. The Chenin uh, gives a very delightful freshness. It's a very fresh grape variety. And uh, it gives also a tension to, to the wine. And the Pinot Noir uh, gives a complexity and a more, um, more structure, a very light structure uh, to this wine. Wonderful. Well, let's, let's taste it. And as we taste, kind of tell us about the aromas and the flavors and the structure that are coming out from, from the grapes and the region you just described. Yes. So. So you can see that the color is uh, lightly yellow. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, it's, um, it's a young, it's not a too old, it's a young wine. 
uh, with a fresh, a fresh color. And you can see the bubbles, which are small. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you will taste it, you will feel also a very smooth bubbles, thanks to the long etching in the bottles. Uh, there is a contact between the leaves uh, and the wine. And this gives to the wine uh, a very small um, bubbles uh, on the palate. On the nose, so on the nose, we can smell fresh aromas, fresh fruits uh, like apple or peach. And then after a few seconds, we can smell fresh butter and bread. Mm -hmm. Very aromatic. So it is very aromatic, intense, and uh, it's a long, uh, uh, during a long minute, we can have this, this nose. Yes, and how long do you age on the leaves before bottle? Um, so there is aging, aging uh, on leaves uh, lasts uh, at least 18 months, up to two years. Yeah. And this aging on leaves gives these notes of bread, of brioche, mm -hmm. and uh, a very smoothness in the mouth. So I will taste it. Yes, we taste it. Yes, let's taste. So on the palate, mm -hmm. we can smell the very small bubbles. It's not aggressive. The attack is fresh. And we have the, the fresh fruits like apple or lemon on the palate. And the freshness is well balanced with a light body. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is very is light, it's fresh, and at the end, the length um, is dominated by the freshness and uh, the lemon. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. <laughs> but they, I also like the, the texture. So it's light body, but it still has that texture from probably the leaves aging. It's that. Yes, it's, that's right. It has um, something to it that, that lingers. It helps with the, yes. the finish to keep going. Yes. Yes, there is a body, the body given by the aging on leaves. It gives a very uh, small body, but this body is well balanced with the, the freshness, but also the bubbles, which gives acidity, you can say, that yeah. to yeah. the wine. Yeah, it's one of those wines, we call it like lip smacking. You just keep wanting more. Yes. It's so, good. So, um, so both sparkling wine and Loire Valley are wonderful for food. So with, with Cremant, what do you recommend for pairing the food? Oh, for, for the Cremant de Loire with Chenin and Chardonnay, uh, you can drink this wine with an uh, appetizer, for example, just uh, at the beginning of a dinner with friends, or it's a very fresh and delight, delightful wine. Uh, you can... You can have, for example, a small um, toasted bread with crab and apple, green apple. The green apple will um, remain the, the aromas that we have. But you can have also a great fish, uh, great fish, sorry, uh, with, with this wine. So not, not a very, or, or white flesh. Uh, you can, yes, drink this wine with, um, with fish or flesh, white flesh. Oh, wonderful. I love that crab and apple. Yes. That sounds so perfect for this. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you for sharing um, thank you. Uh, this wine. Uh, we are going to move on next to the Sancerre. So we're going in continental to the Centre Loire. Um, so, Arnaud, uh, mm. so your family, the bourgeois family, has been producing wine in the Sancerre region for 11 generations. But... Tell us a little bit about your, your grandfather, Henri, and some of the innovations he made um, back in the 1950s and how that's changed the winery these past decades. Yes, indeed, we've been making wine in uh, the region of Sancerre and particularly in the village of Chavignol for 10 generations, 11 generations with our generation. And my grandfather, Henri Bourgeois, he um, actually decided in uh, the early uh, 50s to uh, focus on cultivating only vines. Because uh, to make a living at that time, you've got to uh, also cultivate wheat and to have uh, probably cows, goats. And, and every family, uh, they had these uh, multi-activities uh, in agriculture. 
But that was quite a, a very difficult decision that he took, but a really a good one because it gave him uh, the possibility to um, get a very interesting spot in the Sancerre area uh, on the famous slopes like uh, the Damned Mountain, for example. And he discovered very early that in Sancerre, we don't only have one style, but we have uh, uh, different uh, styles of Sancerre. The one from the limestone, the one from uh, the flinty soils, the one from the Kimmer region marls. And because uh, he came in Chavignol early, but originally he was from a village very close, which is called saint satur only five kilometers away, but it is like today going to Hong Kong at that yeah. time to uh, be five kilometers away and to move. He uh, understood very early the importance of not blending everything together and to separate the different uh, soil type. So mm -hmm. early we started to offer a range of Sancerre which was reflecting the different soils, having their own personality and authenticity. So my parents then, uh, my father and my uncle took over and they carried on this philosophy and together with my uh, brother Lionel and cousin Jean-Christophe, we uh, decided to go even deeper in uh, the uh, single vineyard uh, winemaking. Yeah, I mean, that's only, that's just nest diversity in one small region, because as I mentioned, the soils of Loire and all these regions, I just, I mean, I can't learn enough about them because there's so many and they each give something different. So, I mean, that's, I guess, one part that makes Sancerre unique. Why do you think Sauvignon Blanc especially is so well suited for these uh, unique soils? Well, all the Sancerre are made out of Sauvignon Blanc, but not all the Sauvignon Blanc can produce Sancerre. Why? Because uh, there is a combination. It's what we call terroir. And a unique place like Sancerre is definitely a terroir-driven wine. First of all, uh, the microclimates. In Sancerre, because of the hills uh, that uh, we have, the slopes, uh, and uh, it, uh, uh, the, the, the vine can be planted at uh, 200 meters different in altitude, we have uh, definitely microclimates uh, over the whole region of Sancerre. Secondly, you were mentioning the soil. Uh, um, there are mainly three types of soil. On the eastern part, along the Loire River, um, we have the uh, flinty soil. And then on the central part of Sancerre, we have the limestone. And on the western part of the Appalachian Sancerre, we have the clay and chalky. We call it les terres blanches. And it's exactly um, this type of soil from which we produce Sancerre les Baronnes that uh, we okay. are going to taste uh, today. Okay. Well, speaking of tasting it, let's do that. Um, and then just kind of tell us, talk us through the flavor profile, the aromas, the structure, um, all the things coming out that kind of represent this, this uh, soil. Yes, so Sancerre Les Baronnes, um, first of all, the color is uh, quite uh, uh, clear. I mean, uh, from uh, 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 Sauvignon Blanc, usually we get uh, a light yellow, uh, which is quite classic, I would say. This is due to the level of acidity and also because it's a young wine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 20, 20 vintage, so of course it's, it's a young wine. Well, now in the nose, first of all, it's very intense, very powerful. So the first uh, aroma that I get is uh, citrus uh, character, citrus flavors like uh, uh, grape juice, uh, like uh, um, I have a bit of orange, uh, I have a bit of lemon as well. And very quickly, we have the minerality, particularly as uh, the limestone. You know, the same uh, kind of um, limestone that we have when we write on the blackboard and yes. we smell our, our uh, fingers. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's kind of the, the flavor that we get, which is quite unique, very mineral oriented. Mm -hmm. Flinty, the flinty, like you were saying, the flinty soils and flinty. Yes, exactly. The mineral character is quite strong after the fruit character. So the mouse, 
is generous. The attack is fresh, but we also have the uh, roundness. So the wine is uh, uh, round because of the vintage 2020, and it also because it got uh, a nice sun exposition because of uh, the south facing slopes that we are having here. But um, this roundness mix well together with the freshness that um, uh, the acidity can bring uh, to the wine. And acidity is such an important element uh, for Sancerre. It mm -hmm. helps um, the expression of the minerality and it's also uh, um, the backbone of the wine to uh, be able to age. We can age a Sancerre easily for seven to 10 years if we wish to, and even on specific terroir for 15 years if we want even more. Okay. But uh, acidity is uh, such an important element as well to give the answer to the food. And, and this, I, I've had this before, even not the 2020 vintage, and I've always noticed for this Sancerre, the texture. There's a little bit of weight to it. There's a roundness that you say um, that I appreciate because it balances that um, acidity and, and minerality. So, but like you said, acidity important for food. So Sancerre, your your top side. I mean, there's so many things that are make Sancerre oh, yes. thing. Um, but other than goat cheese, what what are your other than chef? <laughs> what what would you recommend? I would recommend, well, first of all, a Sancerre wine is a very versatile wine. Uh, we can pair this wine with uh, seafood, oysters, for example, thanks to uh, the uh, iodine character uh, that we have strongly in oyster. It goes very well with our uh, Sancerre because of the minerality, but uh, uh, also um, um, fish, um, like uh, uh, the fish from the Loire River, but uh, from the sea. And also uh, definitely crab. And uh, it's amazing how Sancerre can be paired with uh, white meat as well. For example, chicken salad. Uh, but there is something which I need to really mention is uh, uh, Asian cuisine, Japanese cuisine. For example, sushi is a wonderful um, pairing to do with uh, the Sancerre. And particularly the Sancerre, quite dry, coming from this uh, uh, limestone uh, soil, offering minerality and generosity in flavors. Yes, it is beautiful. And that is a wonderful pairing as well. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, I love Sancerre, thank I love you. this wine. So um, thank you for sharing all that with us. We are going to move on to the Touraine uh, with a Chinon. Um, so Philippe, uh, tell us a little bit about Paul Bouisset and its, its place in, in Touraine. Merci, Gwendoline. Well, Paul Bouis is um, the marriage between two families, uh, the friendship in between uh, the Bouis family and the Chenier family that I am part of. Uh, the Bouis, domain Paul Bouis has its origin about 100 years ago in the art of Touraine, uh, close to Mont Richard, and uh, Paul took over the, the winery in, uh, in the 80s. He, he runs the, the winery like the chef he was a uh, chef cooking, but also at winemaking. It was uh, really uh, a tailor with a big and the greatest passion about uh, Loire Valley wines, uh, from Touraine, but uh, also from all, all the different appellations. Uh, and in the 90s, he decided to, to move on. And uh, one of his good friends, my father, Pierre, uh, started working together. and later in the 2000s to cover. And nowadays, my oldest brother, Francois, is a head winemaker, but uh, Paul is still uh, coming to the winery and still working with us in the vineyard. Fantastic. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, Touraine, just as, as a region. We're going to be right in Chinon, but I know you work all of Touraine. So what makes that stand out in the Loire Valley? Well, um, Touraine for me is my heart. It's where I was uh, raised, where I was born. It's a region full of diversity, full of history, like, uh, like Arnaud and, uh, and Florence said before, uh, from the castles of Amboise, from Chenonceau, from Chambord, from the beautiful uh, castle of Chinon. It's a place where you're never bored, you have always something to discover. Even after 40 years, I, I love to learn new things. We talked a lot about uh, 
um, microclimate. The same thing here in Chinon, where there is two rivers crossing with the Loire and the Vienne. So many climates, so many terroirs, with, whether you have the sand, whether you have the limestone that is shaping the wines, but also shaping the scenery with those castles that we talked about, that limestone that we talk, call Les Tufaux in, uh, in Touraine, and that you can see all over. And also some grapes that are uh, part of the leader in the world. And uh, in Chinon, we have the chance to have a grape called Cabernet Franc or Cabernet Breton that a lot of people call indigenous from our, our region and that we, uh, we love to, to work in many dif different ways. Yeah, and so what about uh, Chinon? So Cabernet Franc and Chinon um, kind of go together. What about Chinon is so well suited for that? Because sometimes people think definitely more of white wine with um, the Loire Valley, but Cabernet Franc does well in specific places. So wh what about Chinon and Cabernet Franc make them such good partners? Uh, thousands of years of, uh, in the world. <laughs> You know, uh, the terroir is very well suited. Like I said, there is also many different types of soil in Chinon. So the winemakers can really uh, tailor-made the wine, really create the wine uh, that they want to, whether they want to make a fresh Chinon, a Chinon for every day around that is not going through oak barrel aging or through uh, that aging that I just mentioned and create wine that can age 10, 15, 20 years. So you can have the great wine for every day for a good Tuesday night, or you can have the fantastic vin de garde. Okay, well, let's taste the wine and kind of talk us through these aromas, the flavors, the structure, um, and also what kind of wine this is. How, how long did you age it? Um, how long could you age it? Um, we'll taste it. First, um, the Paul Buys Chinon, the idea is to offer that approachable wine that uh, you can imagine when you go to France and that you sit at a bistro, whether you're in Paris or whether you're in Amboise or in Tours, and you can just enjoy. So that one, when you have it first on the nose, you have some nice red bell pepper, red bell pepper aromas, some red fruit, which are typical of the appellation. You have some little bit tobacco and some nice refined spices. Mm -hmm. The tobacco and spices are standing out to me. Then on the palette, you have a wine that is very, very rich, very complex, that, has a, um, that is very long on the palette, and all about um, red fruits, and um, you know, that finish with that typicity of the Loire, that is from that limestone we talked about so much, that minerality, that acidity, which is so important. You know, many people always talk about tannins, complexity of the tannins, but here, for the Loire, we're talking about minerality, acidity. Yeah, that is a perfect way to put it um, because it's also, that gives it a freshness. This is a much um, fresher wine. It has that richness to it, but it still stays fresh. It's not, not too heavy. Alcohol is important. Tannins are important, but mm -hmm. for good wine, for aging wine, acidity is just as important. Yeah, so um, great acidity and freshness coming through. So that is delicious. Um, what would you drink this with? Oh, the traditional pairing, if you talk to a lot of the people, would be to go to poultry, to, to like game food. Like you said, the kings used to love vacationing in the Loire and go hunting. So um, that would be traditional. But any kind of poultry would be perfect. For example, Thanksgiving is coming up. So for Turkey, it would be a perfect match. But I mentioned a great Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Thursday night wine. And, you know, honestly, with a good cheeseburger, uh, mm -hmm. like I've had so many times in the U.S., it can work perfectly as well. I know. I would love this with actually pizza, too. This would be a great pizza wine. The tomato sauce and the acidity. All right. Sonia. Um, all right. Yes. Um, as well as Thanksgiving. So that's good to know. I'm putting that on my list. So um, thank you so much. Um, love this wine as well. It's my first time having this um, specific wine. So I'm, I'm a fan. Um, so I think the, the last thing I want to talk about um, is travel, because one, I know one person tuning in had asked about they're going to visit the Loire next spring and want to know any tips. So I'd love to hear from you if you have one uh, tasting rooms open, inviting. Um, would you recommend coming 
from Paris to start in Sancerre, going through Muscadé? Are there any places that must see um, time to spend in one, one place? Um, not that you're travel guides, but maybe just tips in your specific region or around your winery would be would be great. And Philippe, since you're with us, will you will you start with that? Well, be, being born in Amboise, I can only say that uh, Amboise is a must stop, you know, and is a very um, central location. No, not only will you see the beautiful castle from Francois the First right on the river, but you will be able to visit the home of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, see his inventions. After that, go to his tomb. Um, ten miles later, you will get to Chenonceau, one of the most beautiful and elegant castle crossing a, a river. And uh, maybe go to Chambord and see another castle from uh, from uh, Leonardo. You know, um, I think Amboise would be a must stop. But again, I was born right. Yes. And is your winery, does your winery open with a tasting room or? We do open in tasting room. Okay, okay wonderful. And you're near Amboise? We are uh, two kilometers from Amboise. Okay, perfect. So stop for wine there, visit some castles. Um, and that's what they will do in the, in the terrain. Um, Arnaud, what about in Sancerre? Is, uh, Absolutely. Is have a tasting room? And... Yes, we, we do have a tasting room and, uh, you know, the wine tourism means a lot uh, to us. Uh, we have actually a, a full team welcoming visitors and uh, we spend a lot of time to show them the wines, to explain them the diversity of the wines out of the various terroirs we are having in Sancerre. We have a restaurant in the same village, Chavignol. You were mentioning the goat cheese, Crotin Chavignol, which is a place where we are, where we have the winery. So you cannot miss that. Uh, I believe on what Amboise is a, a must place to go. And uh, it's definitely a second must place to go, Sancerre as well. It's a region where you can really uh, discover the Loire and uh, its uh, wild uh, aspect. You can take the canoe and uh, just enjoy the Loire and see everything with beautiful flowers and fishes and uh, uh, different uh, uh, small animal insects. It's absolutely gorgeous to see. And let don't forget uh, the fact that you can ride a bike along the Loire River um, and it's a wonderful tour to do. For those, you don't need to be too sportive to do that. But if you're curious, if you really like to take the time to discover, it's definitely the place uh, to go. You take your bicycle and you ride the bike along the Loire River. Um, gastronomy is so important in Sancerre, and there are plenty of wineries open to uh, receive uh, customers and uh, visitors. We love it. We need it. Okay. And we keep on really saying, please and visitors. Yeah. And it's a short, it's, well, it's short, but it's, it's close to Paris. So um, Only coming, two hours from the start of the Loire Valley to move along is not too much of a hike from, from there. So, um, well, good. You having me at uh, Chavignol, me and the goat cheese and the wine, I'm all, all excited. So, um, so thank you. Um, making me want to travel. Um, Florence, uh, tell us yes. a little about Gracie and Emir in, in the same air. Yes, what can I say after Arnaud and Philippe? So, no, of <laughs> course, Saumur is the best place to be, that's sure. Now, in Saumur, yes, we have the castors. There is Chino and Saumur is not so far away. So, and in Saumur, there is the castors, so there is many other activities that we can do. And in Saumur, there is um, um, events around the music uh, in Saumur, but also in Gracia and Meyer. And during the summer, Every two weeks, there are events around the music, and you can have a, um, a glass of sparkling wine of Crémon de Loire, looking at the river uh, with the sun um, in the evening. So it's a wonderful place to be during the summer. And uh, I will say that uh, in the Loire Valley, uh, it's a place where we really love uh, to, to live, to, to take um, to take moments with friends and to share uh, very good moments with uh, friends or families or new relatives. And uh, so in summer, we have also um, the shop. Uh, we can, uh, there is a museum also for in Gracian Meyer. And uh, there are many, many activities also, bicycles, for example, for the sportive men or women, uh, or uh, 
running uh, around the river. Oh, beautiful. And you have a wonderful tasting room too with a um, yes. outdoor area and okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, so for those planning a trip or who should plan a trip, the Loire Valley is, is the way to go. So I want to thank you all so much. Um, again, I um, love this region. All these wines were just absolutely beautiful and also different as well, which I love. Um, so yes, Loire Valley, take a trip, as everyone knows now. Uh, but um, thank you for being here and talking about your wines and your place. And Thanks, um, thank you and appreciate your time. You. So stay well and cheers. 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 Thank you very much. Son. Enjoy. Enjoy the wines from the Loire Valley and see you in the summer or next year. Perfect. It's both a science and a form of high art. It's made from the combination of grapes, sunlight, rain, soil, and time. It's raised up in the moments that matter. It's wine. And we are wine.com. We have the largest wine selection in the world, online sommeliers with free advice, and now our powerful new app puts the entire world of wine in your hands. Wine.com, seriously passionate about wine. Download our free app today.